We got our PS5, we got an SSD, we got a heat sink, and a screwdriver. Time to upgrade. All right, welcome to Mike Text It Out. I'm here with the all digital PlayStation 5. We're gonna go ahead and do an SSD upgrade. Out of the box, it's like 600 something gigabytes and that's not really enough. You know, that's enough for a few games, but I'm already down to like 89. So it's time to upgrade and I chose the Crucial P5 Plus. So Sony specifications say basically it has to be a PCIe Gen 4 drive and 55 megabytes per second read speed. This is actually 6,600 megabytes per second. So this should be above what the recommended is and that'll give us a little bit of a buffer as well. Also, the drives have been selling out like crazy. Like Best Buy has a whole section that says PS5 compatible SSDs and they were all sold out. So I ended up getting this one, which wasn't under that section for some reason. And with the heat sinks, the same thing happened. There were some sites that had recommended heat sinks and they were all sold out. So I went ahead and grabbed this on Amazon. Um, I'll put it on the screen because I don't remember what it's called. It's just a random one that I found that was 10 bucks and it was low profile. So I knew it would fit in the PS5. So let me go ahead and pop this drive open so we can start the installation process. I'm gonna go ahead and put the heat sink on the SSD first. Before you unhook the PS5, by the way, uh, make sure to go and shut it down in the menu, especially if you have an external drive attached for PS4 games like I do, because if not, then it's gonna have a fit. It's The next time you boot it up, it'll have a fit. So just make sure to fully shut it down. So we can see here, this is our SSD. I'm gonna go ahead and peel this sticker off so that way it's ready to go when we attach our heat sink to it. Now, the reason I was kind of nervous about this one, it does come with rubber bands, which I hope I don't have to use, but I believe it also has an adhesive strip with it, which would be this. So let's see if this adhesive strip works well enough where I feel that I don't need the rubber bands. So let me take this side off. So I'm gonna stick this side to this heat sink. Okay, so let's peel this other side. All right, I'm gonna apply a little bit of force, but not unevenly just to kind of sandwich them together. So here I got a little bit of the adhesive over the screw hole, which isn't a big deal because it's just the adhesive. But if I had moved the heat sink back a little bit more then I would have had to reseed it completely. So just be cautious if you're installing your own heat sink to watch out for the little groove where the screw goes in at. So this heat sink actually did start moving around on me. So I am gonna have to use the included rubber bands with this one, which I really don't like that solution but this was like a $10 cheap heat sink. And I'd rather have it be secure than have potential issues with it from the heat sink falling off. So if you already have an SSD that has a heat sink, you could probably just skip that first step. So our SSD is ready. So for the PS5, I have the digital one. So this is a little bit tricky because it looks the same on both sides, except for the PlayStation logo. So the PlayStation logo part is the top. The SSD actually goes in on the bottom. So you have to flip this over. If you have the vertical stand on here, you have to go ahead and take it off at this point. To remove it, you wanna lift this corner. It's adjacent to the corner that has a PlayStation logo. So you lift it up about a half an inch and then push. Now I just threw this halfway across the room because I put too much force on it. So it's important not to use too much force. But as you can see here, there's two holes that match up with the screw holes. So you gotta have to lift them out in order to push out the side plate. So yep, I just scratched my side plate. So be careful with that. We have the SSD bay right here. So all you have to do is with a Phillips head screwdriver, there's just one screw. So we take that screw out and then we'll just lift up this bay door. And then this is where the SSD goes in at. The first thing you wanna do is, depending on the size of your drive, is go ahead and move this screw and stand off to the area that you need it at, depending on the size. So mine is 80, so I'm just gonna move that here. So the standoff, you just wanna kinda of position here. And then the screw, you can just set aside for now. We're gonna go ahead and match up the notch with the notch here. And then all you have to do is just slide the drive in there and set it down. And then you put your screw in here. And then you just go ahead and screw it down with your Phillips head. And so we're just gonna pop the cover back on and put this big screw back in here. And that should click once it's back in place. And then I'm gonna go ahead and throw this stand that I hate back on. And that's it for installing the SSD. I'm gonna go ahead and hook the system back up and see what happens. And I'm back. All right, so I went ahead 
and got everything set up. It is the next day, but the setup process is pretty simple. So once you plug your PlayStation back in and turn it on, it basically asks you to format the drive. It formats, it only takes like a minute. And then while it's formatting it, it also runs a speed test. Now this was surprising because the speed test actually reported back around 5,700 megabytes. It was like closer to 58, but it was still like 57 something. And the rated speed for this drive was actually 6,600. So I'm barely above the minimum that Sony recommends, which is 5,500. And I thought I would have a better buffer than that. So it was really interesting. I'm wondering if I got a drive that was rated at 5,500 speed, if it would have tested lower. So I don't know if that's a drive thing or if it's the way that Sony is doing the speed test on the drive, but it was definitely quite a bit lower. I mean, that's like 8,000 megabytes lower as far as transfer speeds than what was advertised, but it is the maximum that's advertised. So who knows? So after that, I wanted to make sure that the drive was showing up and it does show up as a full one terabyte drive. So you are getting the full space. Then I wanted to kind of test the transfer speed. So I transferred Spider-Man, Miles Morales and Returnal over to the drive and they're about 94 gigs total together. And it only took like around a minute and a half to transfer both those games over. So even moving games off of the internal storage to the SSD is still super fast. I mean, they're both super fast drives, so you would expect that, but it was still pretty impressive. Now, as far as playing games, I did load up Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and Returnal before and after just to see how the initial load was. And unfortunately with Returnal, I wasn't able to get the same footage. I only recorded one shot before I moved it over to the new drive and then the intro was different, so I wasn't able to get the exact same footage, but I did play quite a bit of Returnal last night, and it seems to run fine. Like, I don't notice a difference between the way it ran on the internal drive versus this SSD, and with Miles Morales, there was really no difference either. Like, I hit continue to load my save game, and it pretty much loads in like a second, so I really didn't see any difference between those two games that I tested. Sony did say that there could be differences so they haven't really tested it extensively. But so far though, I'd say that the upgrade is definitely worth it. The good thing about this is it's just an SSD. So even if something happens where it doesn't work out, or you decide that you don't want to have it on your PlayStation anymore, you can always put that in a computer and you'll have super fast storage in your computer. And even if you don't have a PCIe Gen 4 motherboard, you can still get the max speed for PCIe Gen 3, which is around like 33 to 3400 megabytes per second, I believe. So it's not like the drive is useless, even if it doesn't work out in the PlayStation. But I definitely say that if you have a PS5, especially if you're like me and you have the digital one, it's a needed upgrade. Like I have so much more space now. It's not like an amazing amount of space, but it's enough space where I'm comfortable having like 10 or 15 games up there and not really thinking about it as much versus that internal space, which goes really, really fast. As far as this particular SSD, I really don't have any complaints other than the fact that you have to buy a heat sink for it. There are drives that are around the same price that have heat sinks built in that would fit in the PlayStation. However, they've mostly been sold out. So if you really need a drive or you really want one and you decide to go with this crucial one, it works fine. It tests above the speed that's recommended and I haven't seen any issues from the limited time that I've tested it. If I do find any issues, of course, I'll make a follow-up video, but for now, I'm pretty happy with the purchase. And with that being said, I'm bringing this video to a close. But if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you get notified when I drop a video every Wednesday and Sunday. And as always, remember to do at least two things at the same time.